lady mechanic in Nigeria, Sandra Agwebo. Sandra was born and raised in Benin City, Edo State. But in the 80s, she changed the game when she became the first lady mechanic in Nigeria. As of today, Sandra has empowered thousands of Nigerian women into a male-dominated profession of mechanic. And her work continued to attract many political figures and media pages such as CNN, BBC, Al Jazeera, you just name it. Few years ago, the American government sponsored Sandra to the U.S. to go and visit other lady mechanics who are working in factories in the country. So a few days ago, I sat down with Sandra in her garage in Nigeria to interview her about her work and her experience as the first lady mechanic in the country. When I came in, it was like, excuse me, are you okay or you need to see a doctor? But no, I knew what I was doing. But for me to become the first female mechanic in Nigeria, I had to work five times harder than the way the men will work. My name is Nekme Obasoge, and today I'm sitting here with uh, Sandra Agwebo. She is the first lady mechanic in Nigeria. I personally called her a game changer. So she's here today to tell us about her work, how she started this uh, lady mechanic in the 80s. So can you tell us when exactly uh, did you start this lady mechanic in Nigeria? Welcome to Nigeria. I know you live in Canada and you're doing very well with your TV show there. Uh, it's good to know that I have a sister that is also pioneering the you know, TV stations in Canada, knowing that um, way back home, she needs to project the Edo people's name. You know, people always say, uh, you know that Benin ladies, they go abroad for, you know, greener pastures, they go abroad to do the social vices and all that. But me on my own, I don't really believe it because I know Benin girls, they are strong women. Benin women are strong. You know, I am one of those products of a Dobon lady. You are one of those products of a Dobon lady as well. Yeah. So together we have to change the name, what's the bad name they've been giving to Edo ladies, Edo women. Sandra, welcome to my garage Thank here in Benin City, Edo State. Thank you for having us. We Thank are you. so honored to be here with you today. Thank you. So we want to know more about your work, how you have been inspiring other women. My name is Sandra Agwebo, Robert Kokoma. That's my father's nickname. Mm -hmm. I'm from Benin City, Edo State. Mm -hmm. I've been a mechanic for 33 years, mm -hmm. and I've been running my own garage in Lagos mm -hmm. for 25 years now. In Nigeria, they are known as the first female mechanic in Nigeria, worldwide, not just Nigeria. And uh, right now, I run in 20 states of the Federation. I'm in 20 states in Nigeria, empowering women, bringing, taking them literally off the streets, empowering them with skill for them to, to be able to have livelihood, have a voice and a future. And of course, eliminate poverty gradually. Yes, among uh, women. In Nigeria today, I have over 2,000 female mechanics. I have empowered and graduated. A lot of them now have their own garages mm -hmm. around the nation, mm -hmm. now training other women. Mm -hmm. So it's burning, it's spreading out like a white fire. In Nigeria, for you to start finding women, the years I started doing what I'm doing now in the 80s, it was a big taboo to a lot of people yes. when I started learning in the 80s. Mm -hmm. It was true dream. Mm -hmm. I started at the age of 12, 13 to become a mechanic. What motivated you to say, now I want to be a lady mechanic, of which in that period, uh, mechanic uh, type of profession was dominated by men. What motivated you to say, I want to be a lady mechanic? <laughs> you know, so to say, a lot of people feel mechanic was made for men. Yes. I don't think so. But in the 80, mm -hmm. with the kind of, you know, community and the country we were, everybody felt the men should do those kind of jobs. Mm -hmm. But mine was true, it was destined that this is what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. It was true, true dream. I started learning how to fix cars, Jesus Christ teaching me how to fix cars. And you know, because it had been ordained by God, mm -hmm. this is what you will do, Sandra, for the rest of your life. And that is why I think 
up to now, I am still persevering, doing what I'm doing for 33 years now. So to me, it's the best job for any woman around the world. It's not difficult. If you have that confidence, if you have that passion, my own is about the bunny passion in me. I feel every other day, you know what, Sandra can open up another workshop on top of the high sea. The sea everybody knows is full of water. But with the kind of belief I have that God is always there to put me through, I believe that I can open set up a workshop on top of the high sea. When I get there, it becomes a solid ground. That's the kind of passion. When so, you decided to uh, go learn mechanic, who, uh, what workshop did you went to? Yeah, when I went to this mm. faithful garage, I call it faithful garage, but yeah. my dad was fixing his cars there. Mm. And when we got there, mm. I saw one big engine, this mm. black engine oil yeah, running down the table. Mm. Immediately, my spirit fell in love with that dark engine on it. I knew that it's been ordained. I knew that I was not going to go back home. When my father took me there, the owner of the garage was looking at me. Everybody that came to fix their car was like, hello? No, she's too small. She can't decide for herself. As they are saying, I'm repeating to them, God said I should come and do it. God said I should do this. God said I should do this. My dad said, no, let's go back home. When you are like maybe 15, 16, you come. I said, no, daddy, I can't. I want to stay here today. You have to pay. I started crying. That was when my, start, my dad paid for me I to learn. I was like 13. Oh, really? My father paid for me. That day he paid and I said he should leave me. I'll come back home. That day, it was the best day of my life. So the, the, the mechanic workshop where you learned? It was at Sakmomba Road in Benin City. So the, it was called JBS workshop, the, very close to my school, St. Maria Goretti. So the owner of the workshop uh, didn't say anything about your uh, He was amazed. Agenda. He was amazed. The owner of the garage was amazed. was like, excuse me, really? So before I closed that day from the shop, yeah. the news has gone around the neighborhood that there's one female mechanic in that workshop. Exactly. And all that, they started coming out to stand there and they started humiliating me, hooling me, you know. I started crying and I ran back home. My mom never agreed for me to do this. She said, no, you are not going to be a mechanic. You want to bring bad name. Because a lot of people in Nigeria, feel mechanics are made for the door dance, people that does not go to school, people that doesn't know what they are doing. Illiterate. Illiterate. After learning uh, mechanic in that workshop, what did you do? Uh, when I finished, I went back to technical school because my practical knowledge, mm. I was able to use it to write my technology in technical college, mini technical okay, college. Went to I went back to technical college, <laughs> then I got employment with Bender, Bender Transport Service, now Edo Line. That's the place I'm managing. I worked here where I am today, Edo Line. I worked here about 29 years ago as, you know, a little. Mm mechanic in a garage, you know, in Bedell Line. Now it's a door line. That was in, in the 80s, 1989. I was working already with um, Bender Transport Service. I worked for two years. I left for Nigeria Railway Corporation in Lagos, Abutemeta, not for the locomotive, but for their fleet of vehicles. I worked there for some time and, you know, I decided, you know, there was no payment of salary. I said, maybe I should just travel out for a greener pasture. When I was trying to travel, I got appear back to me. Don't go anywhere. Go to a virgin land and set up a workshop, Sandra. Get a set of tools. Set up a garage. And I, we, as we are discussing now, I said to God, no, I'm not from Lagos State. I'm from Edo State. Where do I get a land? He said, no, look for a virgin land. Like he has been ordained. Once I wake up, I have to do that thing. So I started looking for a virgin land. I got one behind Federal Secretariat, now called Abasha Estate. It was a mini forest. I started life in that place. I cleared a portion for a vehicle. Mm -hmm. I put a mastiff mm -hmm. forced wood on the ground, mm -hmm. look for a thick carton mm -hmm. to shade me away from rain and the sun. Oh. But coming back home, my father was rich. 
Robert Kokoma, everybody know he was the life president of Bender State Farmers Council. Yeah. Then when I was growing up, from in the late 60s mm -hmm. till it, it was late in the 90s. So it's not that I was from a poor home. We had enough food, mm -hmm. enough yam and everything. But you know what? I did not run back to my father to start saying, oh, you have to open, me, open a workshop for me or something. Mm -hmm. But you know what? After getting that workshop, I was very proud of my main mm -hmm. belief structure workshop, mm -hmm. main Steve shop, mm -hmm. and I came back to Benito to say, Daddy, I now have a workshop. Give me money to buy tools. Oh. He said, how much do you want? I said, 800 naira. Oh. So I started my empire, now you see, with 800 naira. And he gave it to me. He said, you don't need more money. I said, no, Daddy. I don't need any more money. I left. I came back to Lagos, made an iron box, bought a set of tools the way God instructed me, put them in there, and started doing my job. But nobody came. I didn't have no client. No vehicle came because it, there was no path to drive into the maybe belief forest I was staying. So God came back to me, said, Sandra, you have to go back out there to start telling people what you can do for them. And I said again, I can't do this. He said, no, you have to do this. On my way from work, three days after, I saw a woman with broken down, you know, a car was over it in Mercedes. I can see the steam from behind. And I was flashing her for her to stop. She never stopped. Those days in Lagos State, in the early 90s, when you park your car on the bridge, they will take it away. The, the authorities will take it, and you have to pay a lot of money yeah. to get back your vehicle. Yeah, so, in, uh, in so I have to help, help her. When I said she should stop, until we got to the traffic, I got out of my car, put my hazard line, went to her, Madam, your car is over here. I can help you. And she looked at me like this. You know what? You are a woman. You can't do anything. I said, No, but I'm a mechanic. Yeah, exactly. I can help you. And she said, Really? I said, Just come down. Let me help you so that your engine doesn't go bad. She stepped down in my vehicle. My car is a mobile workshop. I have tools, I have water, everything, toy rope, everything I have in my car. So I looked at her car, opened the bonnet, mm -hmm. saw that the clip was down. Mm -hmm. Then what did I do? I had to just, you know, allow it to cool down. Mm -hmm. The radiator clip shifted for the steam to start coming out. So I tightened it back with screwdriver. I like to cool a bit, pour water, and I called her. She went to really stand off, very far away, thinking her car was going to blow. Mm -hmm. So when I finished, I called her. She looked at me. You mean you are a mechanic? I said, yes, mother. She how much? Believe. She didn't believe that. And she said to me, how much do I pay you? I said, no, I don't need money. Where is your workshop? I was very proud to say, behind the federal secretariat. And she said to me, federal secretariat. I said, yeah. And she now said, I'll come and see you. My office is federal secretariat. You see how God worked? She, she came 2 o'clock that day with two, uh, two staff of the ministry. She was working in the National Security Advisor's Office, seventh floor of the Federal Secretariat. Really? Yeah. And when she came, they saw me dismantle the carburetor coupling. Yeah. There was no kind of workshop. And they said, really, you are, you, you are something else. Follow us. Yeah. That day, they gave me two cars to fix. <laughs> And I didn't have money to go and buy spare parts. Because government job, you have to finish the job, deliver before they pay you. What did I do? I went to a Balende area of Lagos State, met a parts seller. I'll bring your money, just give me service parts. Trust me. I use the name of God to beg you, I'll bring my money for you. And they gave it to me. And I came back, fixed this vehicle, top shape, sound, gave it to them. They gave me a check for 20,000 naira. 20,000 naira to me in 1984, 1994, 95 when I started my business. It was a big money to me. It was like one billion dollars to me. I was like, really? A beautiful check. I've never seen a check in my life. I didn't know it was a check, but I know they gave me one beautiful paper. You know, that paper I went to, put it under my pillow. I was sleeping with that paper called check for two weeks. <laughs> when I wake up at night, I'll say, I'll bring it out when I'll go, I'm going to, the, to use the restroom. When I wake up, I'll bring it out from under my pillow. I'll say, God, thank you. So, Father, this is my money. I didn't know I have to go to the bank until I told a client of mine. She not said, the man said, no, you have to open an account and put it in there. It's not money. You have to open an account and put it in there. a check. And I had to go and open an enterprise business name, put the check in there. When I got the money, at, I, I now had to extend my workshop to contain two cars. Now no more belief structure.
This is how I started. When CNN, BBC One News discovered, they had issues with their class system of their Pajero. Then in Nigeria, the country representative for BBC One News was Dan Isaac. Yeah in Nigeria, mm -hmm. a British man, mm -hmm. Dan Isaac. Mm -hmm. Dan Isaac came to me and said, Sandra, that should be in the 90s. And said, Sandra, I've been having problem with my clutch. This Pajero takes us around Nigeria, Sokoto everywhere. I have problem with the clutch. I've been taking it to many garages. They can't fix it. But you know what? I want to try you with this Pajero. If you fix it, I'm going to put you on our website on BBC One News. I said, I can do it, trust me. And she dropped the, he dropped the car for me. I gave them a timeline. I said, you know what? Come back in four days. Your car will be ready. They dropped it and I looked at it. I said, this is a small job for me. So lovely. I fixed the clutch system, replaced the old clutch system so that all can work in synergy just the way it's supposed to be. There's no management in it. I fixed all brand new, tested the, the Jeep, it was okay. I called the office of the BBC, Lagos. They were on water, Carrington, very close to the American embassy. I called them, your vehicle is ready. Mm. They came, they tested it, and they paid me. I started making money. You know they what? traveled for two weeks. You know what, you are born to be a mechanic. Yeah. They came after two weeks from their trip, and they said, that I said, you are a superstar. Yes. And they interviewed me. They put me on BBC World News, uh, uh, their, their website. If you go to their website, you can still see my picture. For over how many years, I am still there. Oh. My story on BBC. Then CNN World News came. That prompted a whole lot of people to start coming to me. Yeah. CNN came, and when they came, they took a lot of videos. They put me on CNN World News, and you know, people started knowing about what I'm doing. The Nigerian government, American government took me to, you know, um, sponsored me to the US to visit seven states in America for free of charge. Mm -hmm. They took me to Washington, D.C., the White House, State Department. They gave me an escort from the U.S. Embassy in America, that State Department in Washington White House. And when they gave me this escort, her name was Regina, my escort, the person that would be taking me from one state to another. I went to France, San Francisco. They took me to so many places to see other female mechanics that was in company. Rarely that you find American women yeah. doing what I'm doing and empowering a lot of women. Mm -hmm. They were asking me, how are you doing it way back in Nigeria? Mm -hmm. But my visit to the U.S., mm -hmm gave me a lot of you know insight to see that i can take a lot of idea and bring back an impact mm -hmm. in what i was doing in nigeria you. you know it was a great one and i keep on thanking the american government for doing that that exchange program so also i've been sponsored by french government so many countries you know i've gone to if you see that we have had a lot of visitors we have had the first lady of germany visiting my garage in Lagos. She particularly came from Germany to come and meet me and my guests to see what we're doing. It was a breaking news that day. Yeah. We've also received Christy Laga, the IMF yeah. boss. You can yeah. see both of us. This is uh, Laga, Laga. Yeah. the MD of uh, International Monetary Fund. Yeah, yeah. IMF, yeah. yeah. Uh, she came to Nigeria. This, met uh, with her. Governor this is a, this is the former governor of Edo State. Mm. This is uh, the present deputy governor mm. of Edo State. This and this is our Abo governor. You know, when I say Abo governor, Godwin Obaseki, Mr. Godwin Obaseki, Obaseki is a wonderful governor. He believes in gender equality in the workplace. Oh, Why I said so. He be, you know, when we came, he graduated. You can see he did graduation for a lot of girls here. Yeah? His graduation. That was when he just assumed office. He started the empowerment of women, women. straight off. Yeah. Because already he knows what was coming. Mm -hmm. With this uh, Libya returnees and all that, mm -hmm. Obaseki has put down various programs for already. The, the even day. before they started coming back home. Mm -hmm. Even before he started going to Italy to talk to the Italian government. Mm -hmm. He is a wonderful governor. I see him. If all the countries in, in Nigeria, if other governors can believe in the strength of a woman, yes. I'm telling you there will be less poverty among women. Because he gave the fleet of government cars. Lady Mechanic is in charge of all those state government vehicles. We fix them. 
He didn't buy new cars. He said, no, government need money to do other things. Our government need money to build other projects for the masses in of Edo State. You know, the indigenous of Edo State. So the former vehicle, the outgoing, the former governor used before it came into power, yeah. Obaseki said, we have to fix those cars. We refurbished the old cars. That's what is using, they are using. Up to the car he's using, we are the one fixing it here. So he believes in the strength of a woman, the potential of a woman. Yes. Mr. God, we know that Obaseki believes in the strength of a woman. He believes in the potential of a woman. He believes that a woman, a, a woman's potential should not be keep, keep in stock. Yes. Eh? Yes. He believes that a woman's potential should be exhibited. Yes. Yes. And now, today in Edo State, he has exhibited the potential of, of all the beneath, all of us working and fixing government vehicles today. He is so supportive. Mm -hmm. He is the one encouraging us. He is encouraging more women to dive into male-dominated, yes. handsome yes. skill, yes. technical skill. Mm -hmm. Technical skill. Mm -hmm. It's not that you have to not just go mm -hmm. and say this addressing is this. Mm -hmm. Yes, we need women to do all that. But God will not get us to believes that women should use their hand to do those technical skills that can bring more favor, more money mm -hmm. to you. Mm -hmm. Because we believe that if I'm a mechanic mm -hmm. and you own the salon, if I'm fixing Cars. What I will get as a mechanic? You fixing here, you cannot get it immediately. In the long run, we all stand on the same feet. We are doing the same thing. But my job is always challenging because the payment is per hour, per two hours, like that. You know. But our governor, Godwin Obaseki, and Mrs. Obaseki, they are just too much. The encouragement they give to women of Edo State is applauded. Of course, on my picture, you can see here, this is the first lady. A first lady of Germany, da Daniela Scotch. You yeah. can see her name here. Yeah? She came to me in February 2016, my workshop in Lagos. Mm. But right now, you are in uh, those states. Yes. Uh, yeah, we have a garage in Lagos. So she came there to see us. You can see she's even wearing overall. Oh. You can see here. Yeah, you can see her there. You can see her. Then, this is. When, when Christine Lagarde, we had a dinner party, Lagarde, yeah. the presidency Lagarde, in Abuja, Lagarde, had a, Lagarde, yeah. yes, they had a dinner party for her. That's me there, outside my overall, I'm still a woman. Yes. So I said to all women, you can do this job and still be beautiful, be married, sexy. and be sexy and have children. It does not stop you. Exactly. Then this is the Central Bank of Nigeria governor, Godwin Emefile. I'll tell you about Mr. Godwin Emefile. When Zenith Bank, with due respect to him, when Zenith Bank employed, when he started working with Zenith Bank, the four seats they gave to him, I was the one that fixed it that year. I have known him for so long, he knows so much about me and my job when I used to work for Zenith Bank in Lagos. So, and this is the U UN Secretary, uh, Nigerian Secretary to the UN. That's Amina. Amina. Yes. That's our face. This is the Minister for, for Finance. finance yeah. Now, mm. wonderful women. Wonderful women. They are my mentors. Wonderful. And you can see here, I was, in, I, was, I was sponsored by the World Bank mm. to visit Dublin, to talk to 90 financial institutions. These are the really? people you're seeing here. Yeah. I was there speaking about lady mechanic to 90 financial institutions. Mm. Talking about those states, talking about those women, how strong we are, and talking about gender equality and the support we need from them. That is in Dublin. That, that is me there with the MD of World Bank. You can see him there. We are at Dublin. For the, 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 the team was unlocking the opportunities in the fragile market. That's what I was talking about. You are such an inspiration this to is, all women a... all over the whole world, not just in Africa, Thank all you. over the whole world. I'm so inspired right now. Oh my God. And this is me yeah. and Nana Collins, former First Lady of Ghana. Ghana yeah. well, we are at a conference, TVET, a technical education conference in Switzerland. That's Nana Rollins. That is Sandra Aguebo. And this is our Ebo First Lady. You can see. Yeah, the First Lady. Yes. She's wonderful. She's our mother. She's the pillar of Lady Mechanics. So I call her the pillar, Bessie Obaseke. That is my exhibition with the former the president, president of Nigeria. Yeah, good luck, Good, Jonathan. good luck, Jonathan. I was, on, I was having an exhibition in the state house to showcase what the lady mechanic okay. have been able to do. Okay. And you know, we need more oh, support. Right. And this is the former first lady of Nigeria, Pechen yeah, Jonathan, yeah. when we met with her with the girls. <laughs> of course, this is 
Claire Short of the British Arts of Comma, England. She came visiting my workshop as far back 2003. Wow. That's Claire Short of the British Arts of Comma. She came to visit us 2003 in my garage in Lagos. This is the Coca-Cola World President, Ahmed Boza. That's myself and Ahmed Boza at a private dinner, of course. Mm -hmm. This is the Consular General of uh, uh, Jama Embassy. Germany. This is America. Uh, and this is, the, this is the African President for, African President for a Parliament, Africa Pan, Pan African Parliament President, yes. Gertrude. That was a conference we went to. You must be busy. Very, very busy. Very, very busy with work and so many other things. You can see that the first lady of Edo State mm. is already doing a lot. See her here? Yeah. You can see a lot of graduation around her. You can see. You have taken the picture of when I started in the 80s. Mm. That is it there. Where? That is it. You can see Miss Potty, Mist of Men. That's my picture. My question for you is that, were you being discriminated upon when oh, of working course. in the midst of a male-dominated profession? They tried to. Mm -hmm. They tried to humiliate me, but you know what? Because it's been ordained, mm -hmm. God is so wonderful. Oh my God. He did everything the way. So up till now, he keep on projecting and telling me what to do. Even my problem, challenges, mm -hmm. become stepping stone. Yes. It becomes opportunity. But just remain. Listen to the word of God, listen to his voice. And when you do that, you step on, you keep on moving. Me there too. Oh, that's you. At the Echo One setting camp meeting. In a patriarch, I saw this picture when you were uh, uh, see a young mechanic. You can see here, yeah, you the, can see. the guys were playing with play you. with me, you know, <laughs> I'm their sister. Hey, like, they, I'm their sister. Like this the baby. The, this was in the 80s. Yeah. I'm their sister. Wonderful. And they were really taking care of me, buying me food, encouraging me, mm. you know. It was, it was super. <coughs> of course, that's me then. Of course, I'm not ug ugly at all. That's me. <laughs> You are so beautiful. You are so beautiful. Like what you said before, that you can be a lady mechanic, still be sexy. Yeah. Wonderful. You These are your picture. girls. These, These are my girls. There are so many. <laughs> there are so many. Do you know what? You, you, you know, you know what we amaze you now? <laughs> we started lady mechanic after school club in public secondary schools, trying to change their mindset. Say, say, yeah. They get into mm. decide to go to technical, mm. polytechnic, or the university. Wonderful. So that these girls can start choosing their well, profession. Their career. Yes. Who wants to become an engineer can go. Who wants to become, you know, so many other job around engineering, is it production, whatever. <laughs> they start doing it. This was in Lagos. You can see there are pupils from age 12 mm. to like 15 years old. <laughs> we are catching them young. Yes. You see, these are my guests in Kano City, Kano State. I'm also in Kano. Really? You can see them. You can see me here. You have to behave like one. Mm. So these are my guests in Kano State. You can see the award from CNN or uh, Oba of Benin. Sandra's work has gained recognition among political figures and media channels in different parts of the world. She has also received awards from many organizations such as CNN, the Nigerian Federal Government National Merit Award for Productivity and others. You look at her name there, she came to Benin to meet with uh, Mr. Godwin Obaseki and they came to the workshop, that's me there. I think she belongs to the Senate or something, I don't know. But you Google to know. That's a visit to Edo State. This is the First Lady of Germany, myself. Mm -hmm. Pictures. That's the former governor of, uh, of Central Bank, now Emir of Kano. Mm -hmm. That's Sanusi Lamido, Sanusi. Wonderful. Yeah. That's when I was given uh, an award mm. by the first VC of University of Benin, Alele Williams. Uh, Alele. Professor Alele, Alele Grace Alele, Alele, Alele Williams. So we, we, and also, Sandra Agwebo is a member of Nigeria's skill sector. That is me there. That is when sector. Nigeria's okay, skill, skill sector, sector for skill, of vocational skills. skills yeah. It means I can train anywhere in Nigeria. You can see that you there. You are such an inspiration to all women all over the this world, are not me, just this in is Africa. Me and my public uh, schools children, you know, empowering women yeah. globally.